Over the next few videos, I'd like to preview the forthcoming World Championship match. Yan Nipomnishi faces Ding Liren, the number two and the number three players in the world. Of course, Magnus Carlsen declines to defend his title, which is why they're there. And that's, that's a whole other story. The match takes place in Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. And fittingly, Kazakhstan is a country that borders both Russia and China. First game takes place on Sunday the 9th of April. Matches played over 14 games, so whoever gets the seven and a half first wins. In this first preview video, I'm going to focus on Yan Nipomnishi, and in the next, I'll look at uh, Ding Li Ren. So, Nipomnishi, Nepo, is Russian. He'll be playing under the FIDE flag, which uh, seems to keep everyone more or less happy. Um, he's 32 years old. His live rating is 27.95, and that is actually his, his peak rating. So he's in the form of his life, and yes, he's the number two in the world. He qualified for the match by winning the candidates tournament in Madrid in July 2022, which after his drubbing in the World Championship match in uh, November 2021 was actually a remarkable achievement, you know, to pick yourself up. And remember, he also won the, the lockdown candidates tournament in 20, 2020 and 2021. So I think we can say that he is very definitely a worthy contender. But as I said, he did bomb out in his match against Carlsen. So what, did, what do we learn from that Nepo v Carlsen match? Or perhaps more importantly, what did Nepo learn from it? Well, I think he learned that it's incredibly difficult to play against Carlsen. <laughs> it's incredibly difficult to play against someone that makes, well, basically very few mistakes. Carlsen really didn't make any blunders at all in the match. If you remember, in the first five games, Nepo was actually doing okay. Those games were drawn. But I think what was shown in those games was that he lacked that little bit of extra finesse to sort of really turn the heat on Carlson. So, for example, this is game five. So Nepo's had, I think, a pretty successful opening with White. His pieces stand very well. This bishop is slightly passive. This bishop is on a nice diagonal. This bishop also on a nice diagonal. Now here, Nepo played rook d1, but, well, most commentators were agreed that c4 would have been more promising. Looking to play c5 and just gain a bit more space and push black back. But instead, Nepo played rook d1 and knight d2. I mean, these maneuvers are very nice. This knight is heading to c4. Some exchanges. I mean, White still has an advantage here. You can see, I mean, I would say that every single one of White's pieces is superior to Black's in this position. You can see they're all active. And White's king also stands very well on e2. But Carlsen just dug in and defended well and managed to hold that game. But I can imagine if the colours were reversed, I have a feeling Carlsen would have made something of that position. So yeah, it's tough to play against someone like Carlsen. And then we had, of course, in the very next game, this extraordinary performance, 136 moves and Nepo was beaten. Now, he cracked after game six, but he was only one game down and there was no need to, really. And I think this is where Nepo will have learned something. So game seven was drawn, game eight. So 
This is Game 8, Carlson White, it's the Petrov, so Nepo was using this as his main defence. And Carlson in Game 8 just played this very quiet line. You know, this is not theoretically hot. And you can see that, you know, White has basically sort of... Well, it's, it's, it's almost completely symmetrical. This is the extra move. But Black shouldn't have any real difficulty equalising this. Queenie 7 check has been pointed out as being a good move. Nepo played, but Nepo played bishop d6, and after castles, well, if black castles here, this is the problem. Nepo, Nepo got phased by this move, queen h5, threatening both h7 and d5. Now, that could be met by f5, but it does leave a gaping hole here. And I can imagine Nepo was a little bit phased by such lines as this, after these bishops are exchanged. Then white hopes to use the e5 square, but this could be tenable. But, I mean, there are various things he could have tried, but he lashed out with h5, and after queen e1 check, again, queen e7 was possible, but Nepo went king f8. Now, this is really reckless, and Carlson managed to get a nice little bit of initiative out of the opening, and Nepo cracked. And Carlson won that game eight. Then it, then Carlson was two up, and Nepo collapsed completely. But this is reckless, and to me, this is typical of a tendency that Nepo has to play a little bit impulsively, a little bit rashly. However, I think Nepo learnt a great deal from that match, because. If we look at his candidates tournament, so that was November 21, and the candidates tournament was played in July, June and July 2022. And this was a fantastic performance. Nepo won the tournament with 9.5 out of 14, 5 wins, 9 draws. He played super solidly when required. And he picked off his opponents when he saw the chance. So this is a really good example. So this was round one against Ding. Nepo had an excellent opening. Caught Ding a little bit by surprise in a sharp English. And suddenly G5. And this attack was incredibly powerful. And, well, Nepo won in a few moves. By the way, uh, this game and... Of course, the World Championship Games I did cover on the channel. If you want to check out those videos, you want to see more, more details. I'm just giving you a quick overview here. And we saw, so for example, um, so this is Nepo Black against Firuz Jar. Once again, another Petrov. And Firuz Jar played C4. It's a sideline. It's not that good. I should know. I've played it myself with white. But Firuz Jar played recklessly here. So advancing the pawn to d5 actually just sort of weakens the squares either side. Not that white is worse here. You could say that white has claimed some space. However, black can hit out very easily. Bishop g4 is a great move. This poke provokes the f-pawn to move, and then white is weaker on this diagonal. So this is a very nice play from Nepo. c6, the queen coming to this lovely diagonal. Yep, look at that pawn. Dreadful position, blocking both knight and bishop and opening the diagonal. Already black has excellent counterplay here. And here is where Firuz Jar just lost the plot. You know, you can try and calm this down with white. Instead, g4. Reckless. There's no real connection between the, the queen side and king side. And Nepo played very soundly. Rook on a great position. And just picked off Firuz Jar in this position. And look at the king. And this was the final position. No pawns around it, no cover, and that is checkmate. 
So this characterizes Nepo's play in the candidates tournament, but also in the tournaments that he's played uh, after. Well, the Sinkfield Cup, for example. Now, he did lose in, to Carlson early on in the tournament. But, uh, well, as we know, Carlson withdrew from that. And, and Nepo went on to win the tournament uh, with five out of eight. So, yeah, he, he has a problem with Carlson. That's what we can conclude. But the rest of the games, he was super solid. And again, here, he picked off Firu's jar. So, equal material, but Nepo squeezed in this end game. And these centre pawns came good. And Nepo managed to win this, this end game. And if we see in his latest tournament... So he played in Dusseldorf in the WR Masters. He drew the first six games. This was like a warm-up tournament for him. So played in February. And we didn't see him you know, playing, for example, the Grunfeld. We saw him playing like this super solid line of the, the, the closed Catalan against Wesley, so this is actually quite a well-known position. D4, well-known pawn sack. And the point is that actually these pawns just block block out the bishops. It's curious. And Nepo managed to steer this game safely towards a draw. Um, he obviously knows his stuff incredibly well. So he's not afraid to play these slightly dull positions if he thinks he can hold it. So here you can see that basically white simply cannot break through in this position. So I think we're seeing a really a much more mature Nepo prepared to sit things out. And, and I think, you know, that's what he's learned from his match against Carlson. Here was his last round game. Nepo black again. It's interesting, we're seeing a lot of games where Nepo wins with black. So if his opponent overpresses, then he counterattacks. And this last round game from Dusseldorf against Vincent Keimer is a great example. Here, I mean, it's very hard to imagine that black is going to win this position. Black might be holding firm, but to win it, well, Nepo did win this very long game you're not going to see all 82 moves but he finally did win this position with a attack with a counter attack on on the king side so uh in these classical tournaments since the world championship match we haven't seen that kind of impulsiveness which has been a blessing and a curse for Nepo, sometimes he plays very quickly and very brilliantly, but sometimes you know he 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 trips himself up. We haven't seen that. He's played much more solidly. He knows his openings incredibly well, and that's a dividend from his preparation for the candidates tournaments, both of them, um, and of course his preparation for the World Championship match. So he's solid when he needs to be, and just picks off his opponents when they make mistakes, play recklessly, or they, they push too hard. All in all, Nepo looks like he's maintaining his good form. And I think he will be very hard to beat. As I said, he is at his peak rating, 27.95, in the form of his life. So in the next video, I'll be examining the play of Ding Liren. Remember, first game in this match starts on Sunday the 9th of April and I will be covering every game.